Hello chaps, welcome to Bar Snacks, the channel all about business, economics, finance, politics and policy. It's been a while, but I'm back, and today I'll be counting down the top five sovereign wealth funds in the world. Basically, if a government has a lot of money in its reserves, and they're running a budget surplus or something like that, they're just a very rich nation, what they can do is invest that money and then make more over time, and then you can provide you know, better public services for citizens, such as health, education, etc. And this is what sovereign wealth funds were originally set up to do. The first ever sovereign wealth fund was set up in Texas, and it dealt in land and local assets in Texas. And it was called the um, Permanent School Fund. And basically, its purpose was to just make sure that all schools statewide in Texas were properly funded uh, and received as much funding as necessary to keep them open for the benefit of the people. And it was so successful that a second one was actually set up a few years later called the uh, Permanent University Fund. Same kind of deal for universities and colleges in Texas. Uh, here's, here's the thing actually, the Permanent School Fund still exists today, the Texas Permanent School Fund, and it currently has 36.3 billion assets under management, which is pretty staggering for something with quite a narrow focus, you would think. And while sovereign wealth funds seem sort of all benefit, all, all good, um, there are some ethical considerations to think about here. Uh, so, for example, if I am a rich country and I'm looking around at things to invest in, oh, let's say there's a less developed country who's looking to build a dam for energy and water for their citizens. Oh, that'd be a great thing. I'll invest in that. You can see how there would be a kind of problem arising here where you can kind of use your money in a political kind of way. Because if this, if the dam, for example, or an airport or something like that is really crucial to the uh, economic well-being of citizens and you're a majority investor in it, you can see how this kind of finance gets tied into political power right there. Because, oh no, we're going to withdraw all our money out. You've done something we haven't liked. Suddenly, all these citizens are without uh, basic services. So you can see how this would be a massive problem. Also, another huge problem was that sovereign wealth funds up until 2008 uh, were not transparent at all, really. And basically what that meant was the uh, transparency was a, was a bit of a concern for investors and other governments. And it basically made finance more risky because a lot of investors didn't really know uh, where that money was kind of um, it was an increase in risk for the financial system another story for the more in the know is uh, the 1MDB scandal where the Prime Minister of Malaysia along with a Joe Lo who's a Chinese kind of financier kind of guy and with a bit of help from Goldman Sachs managed to launder 700 million dollars from the Malaysian sovereign wealth fund and he is currently in prison but Joe Lo the kind of banker guy who made this happen is still at large in China but we'll get into that another day that's a story for another time anyway without further ado let's kick this list off number five the Hong Kong Monetary Authority investment portfolio with an absolute tongue twister of a name they have 522.6 billion assets under management in US dollars that is and while a lot of sovereign wealth funds are kind of government departments in themselves uh, this authority is actually a branch of the central bank so uh, it's based on the central bank reserves unlike a lot of other ones which are based off revenues for a particular industry like a lot of oil rich countries finance uh, their sovereign wealth funds with essentially monies from the oil industry this is actually based on uh, central bank reserves in Hong Kong and um, invests that around the world and it's been doing pretty well it made 16.2 billion in profit in the first half of 2017, investing in a wide range of things like emerging markets, uh, developed equities, a huge broad amount of things. Uh, so it's going quite well over there in Hong Kong. Number five. Number four, the Kuwait Investment Authority. So Kuwait, tiny country, massive sovereign wealth fund, 592 billion in assets under management. And unlike Hong Kong, it's not founded from government reserves, but 15%, and given that Kuwait is an oil-rich nation, this is an, a staggering amount of money, 15% of 
the revenues that the government makes from oil, from the oil industry and oil based firms within Kuwait gets pumped into uh, this fund every year. And with so much money, might be asking where it's going. Uh, Kuwait actually has a special relationship with China. Uh, so China is quite strict on who can invest in their country because obviously they don't want a lot of foreign interest kind of playing into what they're trying to do there in China. Uh, but Kuwait has a good special relationship with China and it's, uh, China has granted it uh, $1 billion it's allowed to invest into uh, Chinese businesses, which is the highest that any country has ever been granted by China. It was originally $700 million, and then uh, due to goodwill between the two, China added an extra $300 million of investment space for Kuwait. Number three, it's the uh, UAE Investment Authority, like Kuwait, also oil-backed. Currently with $683 billion in assets under management. Uh, and the thing is, is that this used to be a lot higher. Well, the, use, the estimates used to be between 875 and 800 million assets under management. That was about 10, 12 years ago. But the, uh, the UAE Sovereign Wealth Fund is known for not having the most safe and smart of investments. They invested $7 billion in Citigroup uh, back in back in 2008, just before the global financial crisis, which lost 90% of its value very quickly. And similar investments like this have caused it to come down from that peak seen before, down to 683 billion where it is today. Like Hong Kong, the UAE also has a very wide spread of what it invests in. There's not much exact data that I could find online, but between 32 and 42% of their investment is in develop developed equities, but they do keep between 10% and 20% of their money in emerging market equities. I couldn't find very specific numbers for that. That's what is given on their website. Number two now, China Investment Corporation. 941.4 billion in assets under management. And like Hong Kong, it was founded off of the back of uh, the state currency reserves and not off the back of a specific industry revenue. So back in 2007, China had 1.4 trillion US dollars in currency reserves. They started up this fund, gave it a bit of money to go off, and it's been incredibly successful. By 2013, China's currency reserves have increased from 1.4 to 3.4 trillion uh, off of the back of some great investments by this group. Uh, they hold quite a few companies which are not talked about at all uh, regularly in the finance press. Uh, I've got a few examples here, which I'll kind of break down and explain. Uh, the China State Shipbuilding Corporation. Uh, they're quite a big company in China. They basically build a lot of boats for the uh, for the military and a lot of shipping boats and things like that. They also have holdings in Uralkali, which is a uh, Russian fertilizer company, and Logical, which is a European logistics group. All right, number one now, and this is kind of the daddy of sovereign wealth funds. This is where it gets. It's the only sovereign wealth fund with over a trillion dollars in assets under management. It is the government pension fund of Norway. So obviously Norway, not a very large place in terms of population, but with huge oil reserves, it's a very rich country, and um, kind of the the daddy, the big one of sovereign wealth funds. 1.058 trillion in assets under management, and it's nicknamed the oil fund because of uh, origin. It has a lot of holdings in companies that you have heard of, uh, some of the biggest companies in the world, in fact. It's got uh, Royal Dutch Shell Oil, um, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, all kind of big companies who you would expect that a lot of uh, big funds would have money in. And it's also been incredibly successful. It's um, It made $53 billion in profit in 2017 alone, which is fantastic. I've got a kind of cool story about this one that I saw in the news recently. So uh, the government pension fund of Norway has been dealing in a bit of real estate in New York, and they're they own 49.9% of this uh, building at 470 Park Avenue South in New York. And this, by the sale of that, they'll profit by way of $122 million. So I thought that was kind of a cool little thing that I'm seeing in the news recently. And it shows uh, the kind of moves that these funds have been making. Uh, there's a lot of um, 
articles recently about how sovereign wealth funds in general have been trying to diversify their holdings and invest in more emerging markets and things like this. And I think that they're quite significant in the global financial system. Uh, and a lot of countries are more ever more increasingly turning to it as a way of expanding uh, the kind of revenues that the government has access to. Uh, and obviously, increasing government revenues, you can increase public spending and, and have a greater quality of life for your citizens, which ultimately should be the goal for all governments. Anyway, I've been Bar Snacks. You've been watching Top 5 Sovereign Wealth Funds. See you in the next one. For now, goodbye.